Okay, hello everybody. Um, it's good to be here. <coughs> Thanks for inviting me to come along with you. Yeah, my name is John Zakos. I'm the um, co-founder of my side team. I founded the company with Lisa Cat about four and a half years ago. I don't want to make this about a pitch about what not really what my side team is. I want to try to talk about just chatbots and what's happening out there at the enterprise level. But obviously, my experience in chatbots is through my side team and, and what we've achieved has come through my side team. So. Um, so I'll be mentioning that a little bit, but please don't take this as like an advertisement for my sons necessarily. So but basically what happened is about um, four and a half years ago when we started the company with absolutely nothing, no customers, no code, actually no ideas. Um, we just started with nothing and we thought, okay, we'll develop a platform, like create your own sort of chatbot, which I referred to earlier. I thought, these guys have copied us, but they say they haven't. So, <laughs> so anyway, I'll leave, I'll leave it to that. But basically, what I'll talk about today is how, what we have found um, in observing how chatbots performing at an enterprise level. And when I say enterprise level, I mean when a major bank uses a chatbot or a major publishing company uses a chatbot for whatever reason, how are they performing? How are they improving their business? Um, what are they getting out of it? Um, how compelling have they been in talking to customers? Because what we thought is that um, we're going to have this consumer side, the fun stuff, it's free to use, create your own sort of character, but then we want to create an enterprise level chatbot platform. And um, we thought, well, and what we thought is that we're just going to go to the best company in Australia, we're based in Australia, um, and we're going to see if the best company in Australia wants to like, like license this and use it and have it, and have it and see how they go. So we went to National Australia Bank, which is the equivalent of Bank of America in Australia. It's the number one bank in Australia and the number one company in Australia. And um, we started off by cold calling them or through the switchboard trying to find the right person. We finally got through the door, did the sales presentation, agreed the, um, to get, got them to agree to go ahead with an assessment phase, did everything, and the, um, at the end of the day, when we look back on it, they've been using our technology for about two and a half years. It's gone very well, the compelling results, um, and we've since deployed to a number of other enterprise customers since, and it's even brought me to the US where we're very busy with stuff, stuff that we're doing here. So basically, um, what's going on is that we, like the way we think about it is we, we clone a human, so, we, so when we walk into an organization such as National Australia Bank, we go, okay, where is your best customer support agent? Okay, and so we, we interview them, we get content and, um, and documents from them, policy and procedure. We also have a look at um, if they've got existing chat transcripts, they might be using a platform such as Live Person or Genesis or something like that. And we, and we get all this information and we, um, and we go about building a cyber twin. That's the name that we've given to our chatbots, a cyber twin. So they're humanized, intelligent chatbots. Um, one thing about a cyber twin that we really focus on is about having one cyber twin lives on the server somewhere that can be deployed in different environments. So one cyber twin can be talking on the website of the organization on an iPhone application in a virtual world. So it's sort of like, a, like an image with different formats. You've got one cyber twin in different environments. Okay, um, there's public and internal facing applications. By public, we mean talking to the customer. Internal means the employees of the organization talking to the chatbot. And in the end, it's about improving business. It's about increasing sales deflecting costs from the call center and also learning about customers. That third bit is really significant. Um, you could almost remove the increase in sales and the deflection from customer call center and just rely on the value that, we'll, that learning about customers gives you. And that's really significant. And we've actually focused a lot of time and effort on that. Um, so basically, um, this is actually what it looks like, and I'll play a couple of videos, and we can even go live and talk to um, Enola. They've named, uh, they named Enola for um, National Australia Bank Online Assistant. So basically, like you go along to the main website, at some point in time, you'll see a like Let's Chat link. The, the, the customer clicks on that, and the chat window pops open. So you've got the chat window on the right-hand side, the customer starts chatting. They get, I think, like tens of thousands of chats um, over, a given, like over a day or over a given um, by a period, so she's, she's very popular, proven, it's not just like a little prototype thingy that they're trying that's cute, it's proven, it handles complex inquiries, takes people through products, selection processes, navigates them through the website, learns about their preferences, 
helps them through the application form process. It's very compelling and we've got to the stage now where they've invested quite a lot. They've invested probably um, probably a few million dollars in, 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 in this technology internally and with us in, in deploying of NOLA on their site. They actually see her as being the concierge of the site. So not just the chatbot you find somewhere, but the main contact point for customers on the site. Um, one interesting thing is, is that when we walked through the door and pitched to National Australia Bank, they actually had a, um, a portion of their contact centre who were delivering on the chat channel. So they had everyone on the phones, but had a portion of people delivering on the chat channel. And they actually did an A-B testing phase where they compared performance, both, both from customer satisfaction, accuracy, and, and business results. We found cyber twins are outperforming with humans. And there's different reasons for that. Um, obviously, a chatbot will lack a little bit in accuracy and understanding, obviously. But there's ways that you can um, sort of counteract that. And the increased business results really just outweigh um, sort of the, 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 any deficiencies in accuracy. So um, that was really compelling. Like when they said, okay, we've just got rid of all our human customer service agents that are delivering on the chat channel. And we're just going to use CyberTweets as, as the method for providing chat on our site. And that's their policy today. So they, like, these are a couple of quotes. This is from executives at the bank. This is not us like saying stuff. This is what they're saying. You can go and see media articles on this. So they, um, you know, their sales went up, their conversion rates, like on the credit card part of the site, went up a lot. So before they deploy anything, they, they knew how many visitors visit the site, and they also know how many credit cards they sell on the site. Okay? Then they put the human-to-human -human chat, and then they can see the increase or the decrease or whatever that does. Then they put the cyber twins on them and they can see the performance as well. So it's really easy to, easy to measure performance plus we give really good like, reporting results from the cyber twin as well. Um, another deployment we've done is with AMP. This is like the Fidelity of Australia. They do like a lot of 401k sort of stuff. The same sort of thing. She's an actual animated talking avatar um, as well. It's been in um, BRW as well where they talked about performance. So, I mean, I'm really happy to say that um, that we obviously we work very hard on the technology and our approach, um, but we basically decided just to go straight to the top. We didn't want to just stuff around with like just like mediocre chatbots. We go right to the top and just see how we, how how that was going to perform. And they performed very very well. We've been very happy with that. And we've got a very good we've got basically a very good business out of this. So, um, but we've got a very good technology and a very good platform that allows us to do this. So um, what I'll just do is I'll just break and I'll just play a couple of videos just so you can see what the um, experience is usually like. Um, I'll play the NOLA. This is a recent one. So this is typically what the... Um, just play the video just goes for a couple of minutes. Uh, so it's a little bit because of the resolution. So somebody's coming along to the credit card page. They're browsing around. Oh, okay, I see the Let's Chat button. I'd like to do that instead of... Oh, chat window pops open, start talking. She, she's saying, like, um, I'm here to help you with your questions on credit cards. So she knows they've opened up from the credit card by the side. Which credit card has the, has the lowest annual fee? She gives the answer immediately. We've worked a lot on, on, on the processing, so like milliseconds of a response rate. Um, she gives an answer. She also gives a couple of links in the chat window. Then the next question is, where has the diff oh, like, what is the difference between a Visa Mini and a Gold Card? A very specific, a specific product comparison question. She gives the answer, provides links. One of the links is a credit card comparison table because she knows that the customers comparing credit cards. So loading page on the site that complements the answer. So they get the view, the customer's browsing that, then clicks on a link and, and now he's now going through a product, what we call a product recommended recommend the process where learning the preferences from the customer and based on the preferences of the cyber twin is learning can make a recommendation to exactly what product they should acquire. Should acquire. So it takes them through right to the specific landing page for the product um, and then offers the um, application form like link as well and then can follow them through the application form process right through the completion. So this is reducing abandonment, increasing the number of people getting funneled through the process, providing good customer satisfaction, understands personal things, so the customer says, thanks for helping me, understands all that, understands all the personal side of things, got a lot of personality stuff in there, um, which has been pretty cool. So um, I'll play, I'll just play, um, I'll play another video, this is, this is the, um, 